Hey, what's up guys? If you have a 10-speed Rockwell Mirator transmission and you're having a hard time shifting from 5th to 6th gear, then chances are that there might be something wrong with your slave valve. Okay, uh, before I proceed, I uh, just want to make sh uh, just want to tell you that I'm not a professional uh, mechanic so that everything I say in this video may not be 100% um, accurate, so keep that in mind. Okay, so the purpose of the slave valve, according to Google, is to control the range split function, okay? And it is connected to your transmission uh, on, on the side, so if your truck is facing that way, this part will be connected to your transmission on the left side, okay? Um, the reason uh, why I uh, replaced this part is because um, it was leaking air from over here and on the seam, I think, as well. So, and it was leaking air all the time, no matter if the truck was running or it was off completely, it was leaking continuously. So, that's, that's the reason why we replaced it. And we replaced it with an aftermarket part. Uh, which was a big mistake, uh, even though it was uh, very cheap, it was only $65, it's, it's not performing uh, very well in cold weather. In fact, when it's cold outside, it is almost impossible to shift from 5th to 6th gear, okay? So that's why you may want to stick to the original part, which cost um, around $270. But believe me, it might be worth it. Okay, so uh, in case, uh, if, if you do believe that it, this part is broken and before buying a new one, uh, go to your dealer and um, ask them if they can replace it for free because it might be covered by the warranty. If they can't do it, then you have to buy it on your own and this is the part number that you will need. Uh, it's uh, KIT5385, okay? So, <clears throat> I'm going to show you, because uh, there is very little information on the internet, I'm going to show you what this looks like from every side. Okay, this is the front, top, okay, Okay, so that's what it looks like. Um, every single one of these holes is uh, 3 eighths of an inch. Okay, so if you're planning on purchasing new fittings, that's the size you need. Okay, so now um, I'm going to explain you how, uh, when, I, when I took out my original part from the transmission, this is the way it was assembled. I don't know if that's the proper way, but that's the way it was assembled and it was working fine. Okay, so um, once I took out this part, so it was connected to the transmission like this, once I took it out, um, these parts were inside. So the first part that was in was this, this pin, then the spring, and finally this, uh, this cap, let's call it a cap. Okay, so it was together like that and then it was connected to the slave valve. Um, the, the slave valve bolts onto the transmission with four screws, okay? Um, this new part came with a gasket, it's made out of paper, and I assume you have to put it on before you install this. Or actually, once you install this, then you have to put this on. Okay, so I also have a couple pictures that might be helpful to you once you uh, do your repair. Uh, so this is the slave valve that was installed on uh, my transmission. And um, as you can see, there are three uh, thick hoses coming to it from the side. And they are air lines. And every single one of those airlines is five sixteenths of an inch in size. 
uh, then um, they, as you can probably see they are connected with uh, these uh, push to connect um, fittings and they are very hard to find in size 516 so you might want to look uh, for the ones that uh, that are not pushed to connect but the ones that are um, have to be used with a wrench you know just like this one on the top so you use a wrench to unscrew it and then you can disconnect the, the cable so um, as you can see there are also two thin uh, air lines one white and one black on the back so they are one eighth of an inch in size and the last one is connected uh, through an elbow this way there are no cable kinks, okay? So you might wanna buy a new elbow when you're replacing this part just to keep everything nice and new. But as we all know, parts are very expensive and the old parts might function just fine. So who knows, maybe you don't need new parts. <clears throat> With that out of, out of the way, um, I'm just gonna explain you maybe uh, the difference between the the new part, the, I mean the original part, and the aftermarket part, um, they actually look very similar. The, the only difference is it's, that I've noticed from, like, I mean visually, is that um, the aftermarket part had uh, hex screws in place of these ball bearing looking things, okay? And uh, there was no um, serial number on the side. Uh, besides that, it looked just like this one, so it's quite difficult to differentiate them. And um, that's it. Thank you for watching. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe.